Greetings family, this is Bomani Tamba and we're live on Revolutionary Camp. It is November 26th and this is a Monday and unfortunately the journey of a lifetime has come to an end. Family, this is our 15th journey of a lifetime to Ghana and this has been a total of 360 brothers and sisters that we have brought from the African diaspora to the African continent um, here in Ghana. And this has been another exceptional journey. We were 36 strong. And then one or two of, of our folks who have repatriated, we have you know, brought them on a journey to socialize and connect with our other people. But uh, from the three days in Accra to the three days in Kumasi to the three days in Cape Coast, it's a little shorter, but this has been a journey that's been very fruitful for the most part. And a uh, wonderful group of people. And as we get ready to journey to see Garvey Town, and then uh, have our final uh, meal, and then uh, get ready for a flight to Ghana. Right. Well, family, uh, how would you say that this tour differs from your many other tours from the past 12 years? Uh, the tours are not much of a difference. Uh, uh -huh. The same flow of itinerary and the same energy of our brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, other things uh, is become more and more organized. We shoot more and more documentation and try to network with more and more people and try to build a stronger foundation. So. The only difference is just the growth and the development. Um, our goal is always to get better and better as time go along. And just uh, keep on stepping the bar up. Uh, and then also just you know, encouraging people to, to do the same and get involved in this world of tourism, connecting our brothers and sisters to the African continent. And you know, and, and beyond that, just really linking to the repatriation and investment. Right. So uh, could you maybe expound upon some of the uh, new uh, investments or some of the different opportunities that might be available for the people out there? Uh, most, the of the, most of the opportunities are available are just uh, land opportunities. So when we yeah. did a business conference, we try to give as much clarity on the process of land to make sure that uh, everything is followed through the process. We have we had lawyers, people from the land commission, uh, people who had um, uh, land community. So yeah. that was uh, the main and the serious one. As far as other general investment, uh, import and export is big, so we try to connect a lot of brothers and sisters from the African continent to the African diaspora, so people can do fair, in, um, you know, fair, you know, fair, fair business, uh, mainly import, export, but also uh, in the means of technology. Uh, we see Ghana uh, is growing uh, right. as far as our technology operations, so any aspect of technology, business management, uh, you know, everything is needed in the country, waste management, uh, things like that. Um, you're looking at a world that's consistently grown. I've been here for 12 straight years, uh, just taking people back and forth. And there's not much I can say that's not needed. Uh, there's certain things that uh, people from African diaspora are used to, but maybe things are not as fast paced or advanced in technology as, as it is. Uh, so all those are ways that you can you know, make things work for yourself. Right, so family, um, how would you rate, um, I guess, coming back and repatriating to Ghana as opposed to other African nations? How would you rate that amongst other countries? Yeah, the main thing about Ghana, and it's hard to really explain to other people from other African countries, because yeah. uh, they don't realize, the thing that's really connect black people in African diaspora to Ghana, uh, you know, you think of the Holocaust dungeon, El meaning Cape Coast. Those, both of those dungeons, they only exist in Ghana. Right. Um, that's a big part of our history. Many of our stolen African ancestors were taken and brought to those dungeons, and and uh, we're, as our people were shipped across the Atlantic, uh, all across the Americas. Uh, Ghana uh, has no significance in, it, it's not saying that all the stolen Africans were, were stolen from Ghana. Many other African nations, um, or at that point nations, lost their people and it wasn't Ghana at that point. So uh, all, yeah. it's a combination of uh, you know, West Africa, further interior, but there's, there's no, specific trace, but majority of the energy is in Ghana. Uh, so another thing you're looking at is Kwame Nkrumah, 1957 independence movement. Yes. Uh, that was, Kwame Nkrumah influenced uh, the rest of the African continent to pull for independence and not only to think of their own independent or individual country, right. but the African nation as a whole. Uh, you're talking about the energy of, that, that kicked off the African or, Organization of African Union, OAU, which right. is now the AU. Yeah. You're talking about the, 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 the culture of uh, the Asante uh, kingdom. You're talking about the, the Dinka Stam Sprint, mm -hmm. the, that whole system mm -hmm. of our culture. Unique in Ghana, Kente Cloth. Right. Um, you, know, you, you go around awesome. Ghana from Accra, 
Kumasi to Cape Coast Elmina and you see the significance. I've been to other countries, um, Senegal, you know, you see the relevance because of Gory Island, right. um, but it's not that big impact. And then also, you have several thousand of us from African diaspora that have repatriated and you have a lot of energy that keeps on coming in. Right. So those are some of the things that make Ghana that relevant. And then the access to get to Ghana for, with flight routes and things like that. And then the openness of this uh, business and investment in the country. Right. So let's just get into the meat and potatoes really quickly. Uh, would you say um, what sets your Africa for the Africans tours and investments apart from the rest of the tours, whether in Ghana or throughout Africa or the world? What, what makes you unique? Well, we appreciate it. Um, yeah. The uniqueness is uh, our focus and dedication is to our brothers and sisters in African diaspora with that link to connect them to the African continent. That's definitely one of the biggest difference. And beyond that, it's just the management structure and the organization flow, the consistent communication, email, text message, uh, anything online, mm -hmm. and then the, 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 the overload of documentation, uh, uh, videos and pictures. I really feel no one has more pictures in the world that they have online of uh, Ghana uh, or, or videos. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the big things. I have videos on almost everything. I've traveled around the country, and we don't always go to the same parts of the country. We always make sure we go to new places. Like one of the main new places that we went to this time was the Asante Palace Museum. Unfortunately, I never went there before, but I was able to get some good documentation of that. So as long as I keep coming, we just record anywhere from 15 to 20 hours of video clips. That's anywhere from two to 300 video clips, three to five minutes or some a little longer. Uh, so the information gets out and then there's a lot of underground marketing and I just spent the last 12 years honestly just building and putting information out there and connecting and networking with people and basically just delivering and giving people a journey of a lifetime so the information is shared and shared. Uh, so, uh, you know, you have the, the information on the website is very detailed and organized and it's always updated. Uh, so it's a level of this consistent communication and this is the technology piece of it that we've taken to a different level. Any words of advice for those uh, of our sisters and brothers out there that may be sitting on the fence? Yeah, the best thing I tell people to do, um, you know, is just uh, cut back on your cost of spending. Uh, sometimes we don't feel like we have three to four thousand dollars to travel or go somewhere. But this is a journey that uh, we deserve and it's dedicated to us to the highest level. Everything is prepared and organized for you. And I'm there 24 7 there to help you go through everything from visas to passport, to preparation to packing, all those things. Uh, so, the, you know, the main encouragement is save your money and cut back on uh, certain spending that you can avoid. There's a lot of things that we spend money on with, um, you know, European brands or, or, or just, you know, white people in general that we can literally cut back. Uh, a lot of times we're just out and, you know, if we just really think about just the focus point of it, uh, we can come up with a cash flow. There's many different uh, techniques and ways, but it's all about sacrifice. Uh, a lot of times I myself don't go to a bunch of other places. Mm -hmm. That way I can be prepared to use my resources to go to Africa. Even when, before we even start these journeys of a lifetime, that's what I would do. I would save my, you know, save my money and every few months I would go to a different African country mm -hmm. and just build that energy. Um, and you know, I wasn't making big money like, 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 like that, but it's like, you know, you make a decent amount of money, you know, you budget. Uh, and it's something that you know we have to build with discipline. And beyond that, uh, uh, if you you know if you not if you're not open to come with a group and you want to do your own individual uh, uh, journey, uh, you can go online, purchase a ticket, and then you know make you know, make your short little itinerary and you know connect to the country. Uh, you know everything is open nowadays as far as uh, travel. You have uh, hotels all over um, Africa. You can just access online, and then you have tour companies, tour guides, and people you can connect with. And then, in general, you have a lot of brothers and sisters from the African diaspora that lives here. So, in our little pockets of connections and, and energy, we can always find one or two of them online and reach out to them. And a lot of them are open to connecting with us, and maybe you know, they'll be open to giving you a personal journey based on their experience. Okay, well, just one last question before I let you go. Uh, just after doing this for the past 12 years, would you say that this continuous ball of energy of, of uh, red, black, and green Pan-Africanism growing here in Ghana? Do you see more of us coming, more of us repatriating? Yeah, the energy yeah. is growing little by little. And the thing of it is, the uh, only way the energy can keep on going is if we just keep on doing the things we're doing and not shy away from this uh, consistent work. Because at the end of the day, the consistency, right. the dedication, and being organized will get you through anything. Shay, any, any other last words? Uh, last word, family, visit our website, africafortheafricans.org, and view the details on the main menu of our website. And also, go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com 
forward slash Bomani 2007 or just uh, type in Bomani or Bomani Tamba and you'll see a list of all of the videos. We have over 1400 videos on YouTube, at least 1200 on Ghana directly on all aspects of Ghana including preparation, conference call, interviews and all the details and information that you can uh, possibly think of. Alright, thank you family.